My name's Brianna and I'm an admissions counselor here at Huntington University. I'm also an HU alumni, graduated in 2019, and I'm so excited to be bringing the next Word Up Wednesday in our series. So today we're going to keep talking about community and the power of relationships. So I don't know about you guys, but being human, I kind of like being in power sometimes. And I'll definitely admit that I like to be in control. But unfortunately, power and control are actually two things that are really harmful to our relationships. And so if you don't listen to anything else in this video, if you stop it after 30 seconds in, I want you to have this question to think about today. In a world that pushes people out of the way to get what's best for themselves, how can we instead develop relationships that are built on empathy, unity, and service? So I hope that you keep watching. Let's go ahead and dive into our passage. Today we're going to be looking at Matthew 20, verses 20 through 28. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons, which is James and John, approached Jesus with her sons. She knelt down to ask him for something. What do you want? He asked her. Promise, she said to him, that these two sons of mine may sit, one at your right and the other on your left, in your kingdom. Jesus answered, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? We are able, they told him. He told them, you will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right and left is not mine to give. Instead, it is for those for whom it has been prepared for by my father. When the disciples heard this, they became indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them over and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in high positions act as tyrants over them. It must not be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So in this passage, we see James and John kind of asking for their piece of power. And in fact, it's actually their mom that approaches Jesus on their behalf and asks that they are able to sit at Jesus's right and left hand. Now, this is a really big question, right? This is a really big thing to ask for. In fact, Jesus answers them and says, you don't know what you're asking. And these great seats in the kingdom come with a really high price tag. They're going to have to drink from the same cup as Jesus. And even then, Jesus says it's not guaranteed that they get these great seats and that, in fact, it's up to the Father to give those seats out, not him. Now, when I was reading through this, I kind of thought about being a kid and calling shotgun so that you have the front seat in the van, right? So I grew up with five siblings, so it always was a race to be the first one to call shotgun as we were all loading up so that you could get that best seat in the van. Now that front seat, right, it was a seat of power. And so when I was growing up, we had like the CDs. And so you would flip through the CD case and you could be the one that picked out the CD and you got to put it in the radio player. And the front seat, you got to spread your legs out, right? You had leg room, your knees weren't crammed into the seat in front of you. Your head didn't hit the roof of the van every time you went over a bump. The front seat is the seat you wanted to be in right? You wanted to call shotgun so that you could have the best seat in the van. But what Jesus tells us here is that you don't just get to have the best seat, right? Instead, you have to be able to drink from the same cup. Now, when I think about our relationships, when I think about drinking from the same cup as someone, I think about living life with them in such a way that you're experiencing exactly what they're experiencing as though you were experiencing it yourself. You're taking their joy, you're taking their pain, you're taking their moments of waiting, their moments of celebration, and all of that, you're experiencing it alongside them as if you were experiencing it yourself. And I think it's this type of empathy that is really useful for our relationships. As I was going over this passage, I also noticed the importance of unity. You see, my translation says that when the disciples heard this, they became indignant with the two brothers. Basically meaning that they were angry and annoyed that James and John had asked for these two seats. And again, it reminds me of being a kid when we would call shotgun. Our siblings definitely were indignant. They were angry and annoyed that we got the best seat and they were crammed back in the third row of the van. But instead of letting this anger and annoyance fester, Jesus calls the disciples together. 
And it makes sense to me why it's so important for them to be unified, right? They have a big purpose to spread the gospel. And we also, in our relationships, in our communities, we have a great purpose. And I know that sometimes it doesn't seem like it. I know that sometimes it seems like the community that you're in is so small that it doesn't matter to the larger community. But I want you to remember this phrase, community impacts community. And there are a million examples that I could give, but I wanna focus just on campus as an example. So you might have two or three close relationships on your floor and that community that you have with your couple of friends impacts the community on your floor. That community on your floor impacts the community in your hall. That community in your hall impacts the community on campus. That community on campus impacts the community of the city of Huntington. It's like small little ripple effects. Community impacts community. And without a doubt, just like the disciples had moments that they were angry and annoyed with each other, we are going to have moments that we're angry and annoyed with people that we're in community with. But instead of letting those things fester and letting those emotions build, we have to go back together and pursue unity, just like Jesus calls the disciples back together. And then finally, we get to this pretty famous verse. If you've been in the church for a little bit, you've probably heard it before. The great among you must be a servant. And I love how Jesus talks about this. He uses the phrase, this translation says, it must not be like that among you. But some translations that I've read have said, not so with you. And I love that distinction because at the beginning, right before he says, not so with you, Jesus talks about how the rulers of the uh, world, the Gentiles, lord it over them and they use their authority to act as tyrants over other people. And then Jesus says, not so with you. And then we get to that verse where Jesus says, the great among you must be your servant. So of course I have to go back to the analogy of being a kid and calling shotgun in the car. And I just think of that distinction between fighting for that best seat in the van versus being a servant and holding the door open for my siblings. Easier said than done sometimes. So if you want to be great, if you want to have great power in your relationships, Look for ways to start serving people that you're in relationship with. Jesus takes this world that we live in, this Gentiles and how they use the power to lord it over people, and he flips that upside down. And he says, not so with you. If you want to use your relational power well, use it to serve other people. So again, here's the question that I have for you. In a world that pushes people out of the way to get what's best for them, how do we instead develop relationships that are built on empathy, unity, and service? How can we start drinking from the same cup as the people that we're in relationship with? How can we start addressing some relationships that are filled with anger and annoyance? And how can we start to pursue unity instead? How can we start serving the people that are around us? Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day.